I've got this equation on the board, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4. That's going to describe a surface, that's a two-dimensional surface, that lives in three space. <laughs> so the space it lives in is three dimensional, but it's not going to have any volume to it. It's going to have surface area. So it's a two dimensional surface that lives in three space. And let's see if we can figure out what the graph of this equation looks like. So pause the video and think about it, but don't spend too long if you get if you feel like you get stuck, because I'm going to give you a hint in just a second. But see if you can figure it out. If you want a hint, tune back in. Welcome back. Here's your hint. This is the same as the equation, the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 2. Now I have to be careful. In order to be able to take the square root of both sides and have this be an equivalent equation, both sides had to be positive to begin with. Well, 4 clearly was, or sorry, not negative, well, positive in this case. 4 is definitely positive. This expression can never be negative because it's a sum of squares. And since it's equal to 4, I know that it's actually positive in this case. So it is legal for me to manipulate the equation to get to this. Now, earlier in the lecture videos, we saw something that looked like this. So pause again, see if you can figure out what this looks like. Welcome back. OK, so this is the set of all points, x, y, z, whose distance from the origin, because that's the formula for the distance to the origin, is 2. So it's all points x, y, z, whose distance to the origin is 2. <laughs> so let's think about what we get. If we're in 2 space, and we have the set of all points that are a fixed distance from some point that's in the center, we would get a circle. In 3 space, if I have the set of all points that are the fixed distance from the origin, I'm going to get a sphere. It's going to be a sphere. In this case, it's centered at the origin, because this was the distance to the origin. And I want to emphasize that it's a two-dimensional sphere. It's just the surface of the sphere. It's this blue rubber here, not the air inside. It's not a solid sphere. If I meant a solid sphere, I'd either have to say solid sphere, or we can call a solid sphere a ball. Okay. But sphere means just the surface of the sphere. Those are the points whose distance from the origin is 2. So let's see how we would go about graphing something like that. So here are my axes. Now, nifty thing about a sphere is that if I look at the cross section that I would get of the sphere in any plane that I slice through it with, I'm always going to get a circle. Okay, so the intersection of this sphere with the coordinate planes is just going to be a circle. So in the yz plane, which is the simplest one, because that's the one I'm looking at straight on, okay, I would have a circle. Okay. And in the xy plane, I would have a circle. And in the xz plane, I would have a circle. And if I draw those three cross-sectional circles, this really does suggest a sphere. Okay. Couple of things to point out. The only circle that actually looks round is the one in the yz plane. The other ones get a little bit warped by virtue of the fact that we're putting something three-dimensional on a two-dimensional whiteboard. Okay. I've used dotted lines for the back portion of things. Okay. You'll notice for this, which was, I'll draw it in green now, sort of highlight. That was the circle in the xz plane. The forward part of it is a little bit to the left of the part that's behind it. That's because as we come forward, remember, x comes forward this way, so we're actually representing forward as leftward and downward. Okay? And backward is rightward and upward. Okay? So I've sort of respected that here. So in this circle, the forward part is to the left of the backward part. In the circle in the xy plane, the part that's in front is lower than the part that's in back, consistent with forward being left and down. Okay. So that's generally how I will draw 
a sphere by just drawing three cross-sectional circles that pass through the planes that are parallel to the coordinate planes. In this case, they actually are the coordinate planes, but that pass through the center. <laughs> now, this set circle happens to be centered at the origin. Okay. I didn't use any tick marks here, but this distance, this radius, would actually be 2. Do be careful. Notice that in the original equation that didn't have the square root in it, this was the radius squared that showed up. Okay. So what I'd like to do is let's take a circle. Let's let the center be the point 4, negative 1, 2. Let's let the radius be 3. Let's try and come up with an equation for that sphere and then try and graph it. Okay. See if you can figure that out. Again, basically this is going to be the set of all points whose distance to this point is equal to 3. Okay. So pause the video, see if you can figure that out. Okay. Welcome back. Okay. So I'm just going to say the distance has to equal 3, where the distance is between an arbitrary point on the surface of the sphere and this very specific point. By the distance formula, that would be the square root of x minus 4 squared plus y plus 1 squared, that's y minus a negative 1, plus z minus 2 squared. That distance has to equal 3. That works. But it's a whole lot easier if I just square both sides and say x minus 4 squared plus y plus 1 squared plus z minus 2 squared is equal to 9. And these two equations are equivalent. Now I have to be careful. Sometimes if I have an equation and I square both sides, I can change the answers. So for example, if I start with x equals 2 and then I square both sides, I get x squared equals 4. Well, that has an extra solution. x could equal negative 2. The problem was, it wasn't, x is a symbol that could, in theory, represent something that's negative, but obviously it doesn't in this case because I wanted it to be positive. But there's nothing here that still tells me that x has to represent a positive number. In this case, though, everything was non-negative no matter what. I mean, obviously, if this is equal to 3, it's positive because it's equal to 3. But if I just had that expression, I know that that can never represent a negative number because square roots can't be negative. If I just have this expression, it's a sum of squares. It can't be negative. So I didn't, you know, gain or lose any points by squaring both sides. So this would be the standard form for the equation of that particular sphere. Now, if I wanted to graph that, I'm going to try to start by plotting the center. So I'm going to come oh, forward 4 to the left 1 and then up 2. So there's a distance of 2. I'm going to come up 2 so there's the center right there. Now I'm actually going to plot that center point. That's not actually part of the sphere. It's just helpful for me in drawing the sphere. The sphere is all of the points whose distance to this point is 3. The distance from that point to itself is 0. So that's not a point on the sphere, but it's helpful for me in drawing the sphere. Okay. So now I just want to draw in the cross-sectional circles. I think I'm going to start in the plane that would be parallel to the yz plane. So I've sort of been using this distance as 3, so I'll draw a circle of radius 3 there, and then we'd have a circle here, and a circle here. So that would be our sphere, just moved over so that its center is at this particular point. <laughs> And in general, if you have an equation that looks something like this, you're going to have a sphere. Okay. Now, I could also have something that looks like this. x squared plus y squared plus 4y plus z squared equals 2. Okay. That's also going to be a sphere, 
what I would need to do in order to put it into standard form, which would look something like this, is I'd have to figure out what the center and what the radius of that sphere are. I would have to do that by completing the square. So if I can see that I have just 1x squared, 1y squared, and 1z squared, in this case I also have some extra y's. So that tells me that the center has a y-coordinate other than 0 because that's going to be the result of squaring y plus or minus some number. Okay, That's how I get those y's. So I would need to complete the square to find this. So I'm going to stop this video here, tune back in in the next video, and we'll find the center and radius and put the, this into standard form, which looks something like this. So if you want to try that on your own before you tune into the next video, that would be great.